Hello and welcome to Dove Biology, Apes Lessons to Go. In today's video, we'll be looking at human population growth and age structure diagrams. Each week, about 1.6 million people are added to the world's population. Therefore, the world's population is projected to increase from well over 7 billion people today to over 9 billion people by 2050. Now, some scientists believe that humans will soon outgrow the available supply of resources needed to survive. This is not a new idea. Population biologist Thomas Malthus in 1798 postulated that all populations struggle for existence because there are limited resources available. We're already unable to provide the basic necessities for one out of every five people. It's about 1.4 billion people. So how are we going to then provide for uh, an additional uh, 1.5 billion people as we move forward? While humans can certainly raise the environment's carrying capacity through technology, how long can we continue to increase the Earth's carrying capacity for humans without seriously degrading the life support system for us and many other species? A more sustainable world is one in which the population would level off, uh, production and resource use would stabilize, and our overall pollution production would decline. There's a constant debate over the need to reduce population growth. If we're going to uh, engage in this conversation, though, we must consider the various moral, religious, and personal freedom concepts that are associated with the idea of population control. It took almost all of known human history to reach our first billion individuals. 130 years later, in 1930, we were at the 2 billion mark and added the most recent billion in only 12 years. So we have had this ever-increasing uh, rapid growth. The reason for this is because of our expansion of agriculture um, and industrial production as well as lower death rates as a result of improvements from hygiene and medicine. Now, much of the world's population growth is occurring in developing countries like China and India. In 2006, population in developed countries grew exponentially at 0.1% per year. But the developing countries grew 15 times faster at 1.5% per year. There are several factors which will affect human population size. Population will increase as a result of births and immigration and decrease as a result of death and immigration. This can be uh, written as a basic formula though which states that population change will be equal to our births plus immigration minus our deaths plus immigration. Now, when we're talking about human populations, instead of using raw numbers, we're going to use uh, something called crude birth rates and crude death rates. Here, these numbers are based upon births and deaths per 1,000 people in a population. In order to figure out the percent rate of increase, we can simply take our crude birth rates, subtract our crude death rates, and divide by 10. We then can use this uh, percent rate of increase to figure out the approximate number of years that it will take for our population to double. Uh, the number of years to double is going to be equal to 70 divided by that percent uh, growth rate. It's also known as our rule of 70. So with 1.2 uh, percent growth rate currently worldwide, 70 divided by 1.2 is going to be equal to about 58 years. Here we can see the average crude birth rates for various countries in 2006. So you can see that all of our developed countries had a much lower birth rate than developing countries, especially places like Africa, Latin America, and Asia. Another factor uh, which is used in population studies is fertility rates. There are two types of fertility rates, replacement level fertility and total fertility rate. The replacement level fertility is the number of children a couple must bear to replace themselves. The replacement level to sustain a population in an industrialized country is about 2.1 children. Developing nations need to have a higher fertility rate to achieve replacement level fertility due to high child mortality. The second type of fertility rate is the total fertility rate, which is the average number of children a woman has during her reproductive years. As you can see, um, in countries of Africa, 
um, as well as certain parts of Asia, uh, they have a very high total fertility rate, which means they're having a lot of children throughout their lives. Um, this is going to play a big role in helping to determine um, the population size. Now, the average number of children that a woman bears has dropped sharply. Um, in developed countries, it's now 1.6, which is down from 2.5 in 1950. In developing countries, it's also dropped sharply from uh, 6.5 down to 3. This decline, unfortunately, is not low enough to stabilize the world's population into the near future. The United States has its own uh, varied history of changes in fertility and birth rates as a response to both historical and sociological events. In the early 1900s, our fertility rates were very high. We needed to have large families to be able to support um, agricultural communities. As we went through industrialization, the fertility rates dropped as we moved into the Depression. At the end of the World War II, we had a significant baby boom. This increase in fertility lasted for several decades, and then in the 70s resulted in a baby bust. There was a subsequent echo boom in the 80s, and recently we have dropped off in terms of our overall fertility rates. Now, the number of children a woman have is affected by many different factors. One such factor is the cost of raising and educating children. Birth and fertility rates tend to be lower in developed countries where raising children is much more costly because they don't enter the labor force until they're in their late teens or 20s. In the United States, it costs about $290,000 to raise a middle-class child from birth to age 18. By contrast, many children in poor countries have to work to help their families survive. Another factor that would influence uh, birth and fertility rates is the availability of pensions. This can influence the decision for some couples on how many children to have, especially in poor and developed countries. Pensions reduce a couple's need to have many children to help support them in their old age. Urbanization plays a big role in uh, affecting birth rates because people that live in urban areas usually have better access to family planning services and didn't have fewer children than those living in rural areas. Another important factor is the educational and employment opportunities available for women. Total fertility rates tend to be low when a woman has access, access to education and paid employment outside the home. In developing countries, a woman with no education typically has two more children than a woman with a high school education. Another factor will be the average age at marriage, or more, more precisely, the average age at which a woman has her first child. This also plays a big role. Uh, women normally have fewer children when their average age at marriage is 25 or older. Finally, the availability of birth control methods allow women to control the number and spacing of the children they have. In addition to factors that affect birth rates and fertility rates, we also have many factors that will affect death rates. One of those is life expectancy. Life expectancy depends on when an infant is born and in what country. Generally, life expectancy is higher in countries with better health care. Life expectancy uh, is a good predictor of resource, consumption rates, and environmental impacts. For example, in the United States, um, our average life expectancy is about 74 to 77 years. Since we live much longer, we're going to uh, consume a lot more resources and have a greater environmental impact. While many individuals who live in Sub-Saharan Africa only live between 32 to 41 years of age. Now, life expectancy is different in males and females, but the gap is getting smaller. Another factor that affects death rates is overall infant mortality. Infant mortality refers to uh, the death of children under the age of one. Child mortality refers to the death of children under the age of five years. Child and infant mortality is influenced by availability of health care, access to good nutrition and uh, healthy water, as well as um, a, a exposure to pollutants. In the United States, we have a very low uh, overall uh, child and infant mortality, whereas once again in places like Asia and Sub-Saharan Africa, um, those infant and child mortality rates are much higher. Finally, a major factor affecting uh, death rates is going to be aging and disease. The crude death rate for a country may actually be higher than expected if there's a large proportion of elderly people in the population, as it is in the United States. 
Infectious disease is the second biggest worldwide killer after heart disease. In the past, those were tuberculosis and malaria that were responsible for the greatest number of deaths, but today, HIV is responsible for more deaths annually. Between 1990 and 2007, AIDS-related illnesses killed more than 22 million adults and children between the ages of 15 and 49. One way to illustrate the overall uh, age distribution of a population, as well as the potential for growth for populations, is the formation of what we call uh, population pyramids or age structure diagrams. Population pyramids or age structure diagrams have three basic structures, one that indicates rapid growth, slow growth, or zero growth. In rapid growth, we see many more young people than older people, and it forms a true uh, population pyramid, and this is typical of developing countries. Populations that are growing much slowly have a much more uh, acute pyramid, or maybe even like a tower where the age distribution is equalized. Um, in a situation where we have zero growth or almost a declining growth, we're going to have very few young people and uh, a moderate number of middle to old age individuals. It is the number of people younger than age 15, our pre-reproductive age, that will be the major factor in determining a country's population growth. The reason for this is those individuals in those pre-reproductive ages will soon move into that reproductive age bracket, and then they will provide for the next generation. If you have lots of individuals that have the potential to reproduce, it's probably likely that they will, and that will increase the growth of that particular population. As a result, uh, we will have what's known as a population momentum which is a phenomenon that allows a population to keep growing even after birth control policies or voluntary birth reductions have begun. When we examine uh, the changes in the age structure diagrams of the United States, we can see the introduction of the baby boomers in the 1950s. Today, the baby boomers actually make up half of all adult Americans and dominate our population's demand for goods and services. There are certainly some pros and cons for having an aging population. Some of the big negatives for an aging population is that there are fewer people that are funding public service funds, and there are fewer workers producing goods and services. So this can put a big strain on the overall global economy. A major pro of an aging populace is that um, older populations typically are not interested in engaging warfare with neighboring countries, and so global aging has the potential for helping promote peace. From the time it took you to take these notes, we had a net gain of one person every 16 seconds. How many people can the Earth support indefinitely? Some say 2 billion, others say as many as 30 billion. Some analysts believe that this is the wrong question. Instead, they say we should ask, what's the optimum sustainable population of the Earth based upon the planet's cultural carrying capacity? This would be an optimum level that would allow most people to live in reasonable comfort and freedom without impairing the ability of the planet to sustain future generations.